The anime begins with a famous chef being reborn as a child named Pastry Milmortown. Pas is the son of Casserole Milmortown, who rules over the barren Mortown territory. Despite the challenges, Casserole and the locals work together for 20 years to make the land fertile again. Their hard work pays off, and now Mortown territory, with its three villages and 40 residents, successfully grows wheat, soybeans, and other crops. Pas is currently nine years old. He spends his days practicing swordsmanship with his father, Casserole. Pas is grateful to have a brave father and a kind mother. As the youngest of six siblings and the only son, Pastry treasures his family. However, he feels disappointed by the lack of sugar and sweet treats in the area. Shortly after, Commander Sheet Beatwin arrives, signaling it's breakfast time. However, Sheet delivers a mix of good and bad news. The positive side is that, thanks to Pas's idea of using chalk on the soil, the plants will grow rapidly, ensuring a bountiful harvest this year. Pass surprises everyone by mentioning a tasty dish that goes well with tea, prompting Casserole to wonder how he knows about such things. Pass quickly dismisses it as a daydream, though he feels uneasy. Despite his skepticism, Casserole recalls similar occurrences before. Even Sheet sees Paz as resembling the ruler, as the area's prosperity seems linked to Paz's imagination. As for the bad news, Count Reitz has failed to control the criminals in his territory, meaning they might soon reach Mortown. It's anticipated that 50 criminals will arrive in about two months. She proposes arming the villagers, but Pass doubts it's sufficient, given the village's combined population of only 30 people, making defense challenging. Casserole suggests digging a trench to stall the criminals until Count Reitz intervenes, but she is unsure about his help, fearing damage to his reputation if he helped repelling the criminals. Hence, it's suggested to let the criminals pass into the Huberek family's territory. In his mind, Pas is determined not to waste the crops, especially the wheat and soybeans that are essential for making sweets. He vows to take action against anyone who tries to ruin their plan to create the Candy Kingdom. Sheet, noticing Pas's resolute expression, proclaims Pas as Morton's secret weapon and stresses the importance of fighting to the end. Casserole also trusts Sheet's judgment and remembers the upcoming inauguration ceremony. Later, during a family meal, Casserole informs Agnes, Paz's mother, and Josephine, Paz's sister, about Paz's initiation ceremony. Agnes is concerned that Paz is too young, despite Casserole's reassurance about Paz's exceptional sword skills. Agnes wishes for Paz to enjoy his childhood a bit longer. Normally, the initiation ceremony takes place between the ages of 13 to 15, but Paz is only 9. Nevertheless, Casserole insists on preparing within three days. Agnes's mood shifts dramatically to cheerful as she tells Josephine to get ready, much to Paz's surprise. Feeling uneasy, Paz tries to seek help from his father, but his plea is ignored. Before his departure, Pa, Agnes, and Josephine have fun dressing Paz as a cute girl, like a doll. Fortunately, their other four siblings are not present. After three days, it's time for Paz to leave for the capital, but he appears very sad. Agnes then bids him farewell, along with his friends Mark and Lumi. Mark wishes to visit the capital, especially dressed like Paws, but Lumi disagrees, causing Mark to get upset. Once they say their goodbyes, Paws and his father use teleportation magic to depart immediately, surprising everyone with Casserole's magical abilities. However, Agnes and Josephine are more impressed by Paws, who looks like a fashion model. Upon arriving in the capital, Paws is fascinated by the busy streets filled with vendors selling vegetables, meat, fruits, and even brown sugar. Seeing these ingredients sparks Paz's creativity, and he imagines making a chocolate cake and pudding. Before the initiation ceremony, Casserole allows him to buy whatever he wants. Excitedly, Paz starts choosing items until he finds an unusual fruit called Bonka, rare in the capital due to its acidity, which makes it unpopular. However, Paz sees potential in growing Bonka in Morton territory. This surprises Casserole who views Pa's interest in foreign object as a sign of his potential as a ruler, imagining Mortown becoming a powerful military force. While in Pa's imagination, he plans to make apple pie, apple honey candy, tart, and roasted apple, as Bonka reminds him of apples from his past life. These dreams highlight two different desires, Pa's wish to fill his country with sweets and his father's dream of a strong army. Shortly after, they arrive at a church for the initiation ceremony and are greeted by the pastor. The pastor praises Mortown for avoiding crop failure during winter, but is surprised to hear that Casserole will initiate Paz, who is only nine years old. 
Despite this, the pastor proceeds with the ceremony at Casserole's request. Meanwhile, Josephine asks Sheet about the ceremony, curious because she didn't pass it before due to having less magical energy. Sheet explains that during the ceremony, she'll be in a room where she can't see but can hear. At the same time, Paz was placed in an empty room, bound and blindfolded. He's given a glass of extremely bitter potion and left alone, while Casserole waits outside near a magical measuring device. This treatment is a method to stimulate Paz's magical abilities within his body. Not long after, Casserole grows worried as Paz remains alone in the room for an extended period, much longer than usual. The pastor explains that Paz cannot leave until the measuring device stops glowing. During this time, Paz daydreams, imagining exciting scenarios and fantasizing about creating a country filled with delicious sweets to enjoy to people. Suddenly, a bright light appears, transporting Paz to a room surrounded by particles of light. Shortly afterward, Paz awakened by Casserole's concern about him being alone for two days. Then the pastor conducts the completion ceremony, during which Paz must show comprehension of the holy book's contents if he possesses the power. As the holy book is read, a brilliant light emerges, surprising the pastor and Casserole, indicating Paz's exceptional abilities. As evening approaches, Casserole and Paz bid farewell and make a donation to the church before leaving. However, after their departure, the pastor feels that the donation is not enough to cover the church's expenses. Meanwhile, Paz is having a hard time deciding which banca to take home. Because of his excitement, the banca seller gives him two additional high-quality bancas as a bonus. Before heading home, Paz and Casserole enjoy the banca while sitting on the garden's edge. Paz asked his father to keep their banca feast a secret from Ains and Josephine. Later that evening, Paz shares his plans to make banca pie and sweets, expressing his determination to one day establish a nation known for its sweets. The following day, it's revealed that criminals have ravaged and plundered Night Village Litaver's territory. In Mortum territory, defensive preparations like digging ditches and constructing fortresses are in progress. Suddenly, Sheep reports the devastation in Night Village Litaver, suggesting that the criminals will likely reach Mortown within three weeks. Casserole then instructs Paz to inform village heads Cointreau and Blackage of the situation. Casserole swiftly decides to close the other two villages, gathering their residents in the main village. This strategic move aims to concentrate the population in one area, reducing the risk of scattered battles that could harm Moortown. The necessary supplies from the other villages are collected in a warehouse, but they are only sufficient for seven days. Meanwhile, Paz realizes that the Moortown forces are still not sufficiently strong. Not only are they few in number, but they also lack proper training for combat since they are all farmers. Paz realizes the danger if the conflict drags on and decides to come up with a plan. When Lumi and Mark approach, Paz shares his plan with them. Despite feeling a bit uneasy about being looked up to as a leader, Paz asks for their assistance in gathering large stones for throwing. However, he warns them to return immediately if they hear any strange noises from afar, indicating the criminal's approach. As night falls, Lumi and Mark diligently collect stones. Suddenly, Mark hears a distant rumble, signaling the early arrival of the criminals. He promptly alerts Lumi, and they report their discovery, leading to the immediate closure of the fortress. Panic ensues among the villagers, but Casserole intervenes, encouraging them to unite and defend their home. Cointreau is assigned to watch the West Canal, while Glackage is assigned to guard the East Canal up to the middle. She predicts that the criminals will probably attack at dawn because they are not familiar with the area, making it difficult for them to strike at night. However, Casserole believes they will attack that very night because they must be running low on food supplies, which worries the villagers. Staying awake all night will tire them out. Casserole then seeks advice from Paz. He then reflects on the situation and realizes that, similar to making sweets, understanding the enemy's resources is crucial before acting. He suggests gathering information on the enemy's strength and supplies beforehand. As a result, Casserole and Sheet go to spy on the enemy while Paz leads and guards the village. He promptly instructs Lumi to inform Blackage to prepare fire arrows and Mart to do the same for Cointreau when the enemy comes. Mark and Lumi express concern about the safety of using fire arrows, fearing they might accidentally hit Casserole and Sheet. Paz reassures them, recalling how he easily dodged stones that strayed towards the back of his head. Therefore, he assures them that using the fire arrows will be safe. The fire arrows were to provide light and guide casserole and sheep. When Mark asked about casserole's teleportation magic, Pass explained that his father couldn't use teleportation magic 
because it couldn't carry the horses he rides due to its limited capacity. At the same time, the children got scared and started crying and Josephine tried to calm them, while Agnes expressed deep concern for Paz, reminding him to be careful. At that moment, Paz decided to protect the village to fulfill his dream of creating a candy kingdom that brings joy to people. Meanwhile, Sheik used his magic eyes to observe from a distance, where he saw the criminals led by a former soldier named Helm, who had five horses and a force of about 60 to 70 people, including kidnapped villagers. Casserole concluded that the criminals were not motivated by hunger, but were professionals who made robbery a profession. So Casserole and Sheep decided to evaluate their strength. Meanwhile, Helm received a report from his men confirming that the village was empty and uninhabited. Understanding the plan, Helm planned to attack after sunrise, despite the villagers being gathered in one location. Suddenly, Casserole and Sheet appear to feed Helm's men. Helm understands Casserole's tactic of attacking without killing, understanding Casserole's plan to escape after the attack. So Helm tells his men not to attack in the cavalry area. As a result, Casserole and Sheet retreat, but not before causing trouble for the criminals and the criminals following him. Despite Helm's anger and his warning of a possible trap, his men insist on chasing after, forcing Helm to pursue them. Meanwhile, Blackage hears the distant sound of horses and signals using fire arrows. Cointro alerts the villagers to get ready, while Paz and the other children prepare themselves with the stones they collected. At the same time, Casserole, understanding Paz's plan, turns west to avoid the farmland. As they pass by, Paz and the children start pelting the criminals with stones. This plan was explained to the villagers earlier, though they were initially hesitant, especially because it involved the children. However, Pass explained that it was meant to disrupt the enemy's formation. If the enemy breaches the wall, the children will quickly retreat, leaving the armed villagers to handle the rest. At that moment, Helm charges recklessly toward the fortress alone, skillfully avoiding the stones raining down. Eventually, he breaches the fortress. Blackage steps forward, appearing ready for a one-on-one -on -one duel. But Helm's allies start arriving, prompting Cointreau to join the fight against the criminals. Annoyed by the children, Helm suddenly launches an attack on them. Fortunately, Paz shields the children, but he injures his hand and is captured by Helm. Despite Cointreau and Blackage's efforts, they cannot intervene. Helm then commands his men to harm the children, but Paz refuses. Trying magic for the first time, Paz uses replication magic to replicate the injuries of Helm's comrades, which spreads to Helm and his men. As a result, Helm collapses after being hit by a stone thrown by Lumi bringing the battle to a close in Mortelm's favor. Meanwhile, upon learning about Pa's injury, Agnes becomes deeply worried. Josephine shares the concern and is slightly irritated by Pa's delayed return. Meanwhile, Pa's busily organizes the distribution of harvest yields for the other two villages. The captured criminals are now bound and await transfer to the capital for proper compensation, enough at least to repair the village's damages. After the fight, Casserole rewarded the fighters, including Cointro, Plackage, and even the children, Lumin and Mark. They were excited to get swords and bags of flour. Paz also helped carry the flour home, making Mark's mom very happy and relieved to see him safe. Paz also praised Lumi and Mark for their help during the battle, believing they would be crucial for Mortom's future. Mark's grandfather proudly hugged Lumi. Soon people gathered with barrels of drinks to celebrate their victory. While others celebrated, Paz thought about ingredients for Baca pie. Meanwhile, Mark and Lumi sneaked away to check on the captured criminals. They tried to enter the warehouse, but guards stopped them, warning of the danger. Mark came up with a plan to quietly enter the warehouse by throwing stones. The guards, alerted by the noise, went to check, allowing Mark and Lumi to sneak in. Suddenly, Helm gave Mark a stern look, frightening them both. However, since Helm was tied up, they felt safe. Helm tried to convince Mark that the sword he held was his and had magical powers. Intrigued, Mark listened as Helm explained how to use the sword's magic. Mark eagerly followed Helm's instructions, getting closer to learn the magic words. But then, Helm kicked Mark, grabbed his sword, and freed himself. Without delay, Helm attacked Lumi. When the guards arrived, Helm took Mark hostage and demanded a horse to escape. Ignoring his comrades, Helm fled alone with Mark. Meanwhile, other guards informed Paz of what happened, and he hurried to the scene and found Lumi badly hurt. He urged the villagers to help her, confident that she would survive, and then rode it off on horseback to chase Helm and save Mark. Paz believed he could catch up because Helm had taken a path full of traps. 
Although he had replication magic prepared for defense, it was risky, as both might fall. Then, Paz remembered he could mimic anything he had seen with his magic, giving him a new plan. Meanwhile, Casserole and Sheet became very worried when they heard that Paz was chasing after Helm. Realizing the danger, they prepared to rescue Paz. As Paz had suspected, Helm fell into a trap made of ropes and tumbled from his force. Paz quickly caught up and prepared for a fight. Helm found it amusing to face off against a child, and he underestimated Paz. Despite being cautious of Paz's magic, Helm planned to make one fatal strike. However, Paz's sword broke during the confrontation. On the other hand, Casserole panicked as he couldn't locate Paz, even with Sheet's magical eyes. His anxiety grew when he found Paz's sword on the ground. Feeling sad and unsure of what to do, Casserole returned to his house. To his surprise, when he arrived, he discovered Paz sitting happily on Agnes' lap. Agnes hugged Paz until she fell asleep. Casserole watched, asking Paz for a detailed explanation. Paz revealed that he used teleportation magic learned from his father when Helm attacked him. Concerned, Casserole warned Paz not to disclose his magical abilities, highlighting the risks involved, such as accidentally teleporting into solid objects. That night, Casserole and Sheet talked about Paz's magic skills. They worried that Paz could be in danger of being exploited if others found out about his abilities. Therefore, Sheet believed it was urgent to capture Helm before news of Paz's magic spread widely. The next morning arrived, with Mark looked sad, remembering when Lumi got hurt because of him. Shortly after, Paz came and invited Mark to visit Lumi. Mark felt guilty and cried because he was afraid to talk to her. Paz said it was better to say sorry to Lumi rather than just complaining. Finally, Mark agreed. At her room, Lumi seemed fine, but Mark still felt guilty and didn't want to raise his head. Then Paz went to the kitchen, leaving them alone. At that moment, Mark gathered his courage and apologized. Lumi was surprised but said it was okay and he didn't need to apologize. Suddenly, Adisha's smell wafted from the kitchen. It turns out, Paz was making bonka cakes. He wanted to make everyone happy with his treats. Lumen and Mark were delighted eating the cakes, especially with honey. Paz then explained that each bonka had a different sour taste, but when prepared well, it became delicious. Just like people, everyone has their own uniqueness, and Paz wanted to highlight that. He mentioned that mistakes can be opportunities to learn, and he hoped Mark would strive more. Shortly after, Blackage showed up behind Paws. Blackage was really mad to see Mark, who caused his daughter's injury. But then his mood changed suddenly, and he insisted that Mark marry Lumi to make things right. Mark was clearly surprised, but Blackage explained that Lumi wasn't very girly, so no other man would want her, hence Mark had to marry her. Lumi agreed to marry Mark in the future. Meanwhile, Paz was overjoyed to see them happy eating the bonka pie he made in for him, this was just the start of making everyone happy with delicious treats. Meanwhile, somewhere else, a woman looked furious upon hearing that the criminals in the Morton region had been defeated. In the next few days, Casserole brought up the problem of not having enough money for village repairs, especially for fixing the wells that were destroyed, and for providing food during the repairs. He was upset because he had let one criminal, Helm, escape. If they had taken him to the capital, they would have received 200 gold coins. But borrowing money wasn't an option because some regions were unwilling to lend, as they were gathering supplies for winter. When Casserole suggested borrowing money from the nobles, she quickly refused. He said nobles were like moneylenders who charged very high interest, even for a small amount of gold. Then, Paz proposed borrowing from their parents' families, but Casserole said it wasn't possible. He then told a story that their marriage wasn't accepted because they came from a barren land called Moortown. Casserole and Agnes ran away together because they were deeply in love, but many people rejected their marriage. Their grandparents had never even met their grandchildren, so it seemed unlikely that Casserole and Agnes could suddenly ask for money. Paz now understood that arranged marriages were still preferred in society, which made it difficult for his parents to make decisions. Later, Paz gathered Lumi and Mark for a discussion. It was evident that Lumi was getting better, but still felt some pain. Mark advised her not to hurry to leave the house. Paz immediately complimented them, saying they seemed like a married couple. During their discussion, Mark suggested expanding the fields, but Paz disagreed because it would require more money and workers, which they didn't have. Lumi then suggested selling the delicious bonka pies, which Paz immediately considered making them, but it required a lot of bonka supplies and money. Next, Mark suggested learning magic. 
He thought magic could help him achieve success, wealth, and good food every day. However, Lumi disagreed, saying it was unlikely for Mark to master magic as miracles don't happen to everyone. Nevertheless, Lumi had a magic-related idea. She asked Paz to demonstrate his magic, and Paz remembered his past, where he made sweets with friends every night, coming up with new ideas. Then, Paz asked his friends to draw something on the ground. Mark then drew a dragon, while Lumi drew Bonka. But Mark didn't like Lumi's drawing, leading to an argument. Later, Paz used replication magic to copy the drawings onto Mark and Lumi's arms. It explained that the drawings would stay on their skin for three days but wouldn't disappear if drawn on objects. Then, Lumi asked if Paz could do the opposite by replicate something into a drawing, like the shape of a house or someone's face. Suddenly, Paz grabbed Lumi's hand inspired by her idea and left quickly. During a discussion about borrowing money, Paz excitedly shared a clever idea. He first mentioned Josephine's arranged marriage at 13 years old and teleportation magic. According to Paz, with teleportation magic, Josephine's father could transport her anywhere. But he raised a concern about people who couldn't use teleportation magic. Traveling far to be difficult and dangerous due to monsters along the way. Thus, teleportation wasn't free, leading to wasted money for those who needed to travel. Knowing this, Paz then presented his idea to replicating Agnes's face on a wooden board to sell as a marriage photo. Essentially, Paz proposed a photo service for those seeking marriage matches without needing to travel. Casserole found the drawn photo very detailed and estimated it could fetch 5 or 10 gold coins, cheaper than a painter's work because it only used magic. However, it could be sold for more if used for promotion, so Casserole agreed to use it. Concerned about Paz's magic being discovered, she worriedly asked about it. Paz explained that his magic could be described as drawing magic only, to avoid raising suspicion. Suddenly, Agnes whispered seriously, asking Paz to erase the wrinkles from her face. The following day, Casserole and Paz are visiting the Count Reitz region, which is the largest area in the southern part of the Kingdom of Brawlick. It's a wealthy region with 50 villages, four of which are central, and a capital connected by a highway. They're now in Redisvar City, the capital of the Count Reitz region. The ruler there worries that Mortel might seek revenge for letting the criminals escape. However, she's not concerned because Mortel consists of poor and insignificant people. She plans to respond to Mortel and send them home. Shortly after, Paz and Casserole receive a warm welcome from a woman, who is the ruler of the Count Reitz region, named Bryach Isalgret Nolatech. Before arriving in the Count Reitz region, Casserole explains to Paz that the previous ruler died in battle. Since the only heir to the throne is still young, Bryach, as the eldest daughter of the previous ruler, has taken over until the heir reaches adulthood. Unfortunately, the heir has passed away from illness before reaching maturity. Paz then kissed Bryach's hand as a gesture of respect. He initially thought she appeared calm. However, Bryach was actually observant without being careless. During their conversation, Paz was pleasantly surprised to finally see sweets, cookies, and toast. Briach then promoted her high-quality tea, a product of the Count Reitz family business. According to Casserole, her tea was well known for its delicious taste across the country. But Briach was surprised to see Paz smiling while enjoying cookies and tea. She praised the Morton region for its advanced agricultural knowledge in successfully fertilizing barren land. Hearing this, Casserole immediately credited Paz Nalifi for this accomplishment. Bryach doubted it, thinking Casserole was being too humble. Casserole quietly reminded himself that Paz had provided ideas before the age of 10 that successfully cultivated barren land, which might be hard to believe. Then, Bryach mentioned Paz being fortunate to have a good father. Paz seized the opportunity to praise his great and hardworking father. He then discussed the criminals who had damaged Casserole's hard work on the land. Paz falsely claimed that there were 100 criminals causing trouble in Count Reitz during the current negotiations. He also falsely stated that Mortelm involved young children in the conflict. According to Paz, the criminals managed to escape from Count Reitz. Hearing this, Bryach was taken aback by Paz's directness. Furthermore, she was annoyed because Paz's conversation aimed at negotiating compensation. As a result, Bryach pretended not to know about the situation because she didn't want to take responsibility. Suddenly, Paz insisted on revealing the captured criminals and suggested conducting a public investigation. Bryach remained calm, suggesting that Paz's assumption might not be accurate. She proposed that the captured criminals could be those who had escaped from the eradication in the Count Reitz region 
and then fled to the Morton region. Referring to Sheets' remarks, Paz repeated that the criminals had left after hearing about the eradication in the Count Reitz region, indicating they left before the eradication occurred. However, when Bryach gave another reason, Casserole presented evidence, a sword with a symbol of the Count Reitz region. Seeing this, Bryach and her assistant panicked and found themselves trapped, unable to deny it any longer. It was clear that Count Reitz had failed to eliminate the criminals in its region, and thus, the Count Reitz region had to take responsibility. Nonetheless, Paz didn't intend to cause trouble. He simply insisted that Count Reitz should compensate for the damages fairly. Ryach then offered compensation of 100 gold coins. However, Paz requested more, mentioning the suffering of the Morton region residents, and the compensation increased to 130. Paz promptly stated that it wasn't sufficient. Annoyed, Ryach agreed to provide 150 gold coins and Paz accepted this offer. While Bryach muttered to herself, recognizing that Paz was no ordinary child, and now she believed Casserole's initial words. Though spending 150 gold coins was a loss, compared to the cost of losing trust in the kingdom for letting the criminals escape, it was very inexpensive. After they finished counting the coins, Paz and Casserole said their goodbyes and prepared to leave. However, before they departed, Paz introduced himself. Out of curiosity, Bryach asked Paz why he shook his head while drinking tea. Paz honestly admitted that the tea was delicious, but the excessive sweetness spoiled the enjoyment. Specifically, the strong aroma of the tea disappeared because of the overwhelming sweetness. Therefore, Paz suggested reducing the sweetness. Hearing this, Casserole then scolded Paz for being impolite in criticizing such well-known food. Realizing he had forgotten to bring souvenirs, Paz gave Briach a cloth with a picture of her face as a gift. Briach became even more surprised and intrigued by Paz's extraordinary nature. Afterwards, Paz and Casserole went to visit Duke Kedresic, the commander of the royal forces. They were warmly welcomed and introduced to his grandson Squail, a distinguished graduate of the Military Academy dormitory. Squail seemed nervous upon meeting Casserole, who was famous as a hero. Paz then introduced himself formally, even extending birthday wishes to Squail. Hearing this, Squill became even more nervous, to the point of accidentally biting his tongue. Kedresic was surprised to see Paz's mature attitude, not matching his age. He also asked if Paz had been blessed with magic. Paz admitted to having some, but humbly claimed it was simply luck. Kedresic then requested to see Paz's magic if there was time. Since Paz's magic was just drawing, he demonstrated it immediately using a servant's handkerchief. Paz then displayed a picture of a beautiful noblewoman from Margrave Huborek. Kedresic and Squill were taken aback, with Squill immediately took a liking to her. Paz explained that the woman in the picture was Petra, the third daughter of the Huberic family. Before arriving here, Paz and his father had visited the Huberic region. Casserole had informed them that the Huberic family couldn't attend the party due to a prolonged conflict with their neighbors. Hence, they requested Casserole to introduce their daughter with the picture. Squill was immediately captivated by Petra's beauty. Pass then invited Squail to attend Petra's coming-of-age ceremony. Kedresic then muttered to himself, criticizing Squail for not considering his position and realizing that it was a clear and straightforward marriage proposal. Kedresic believed Paz wasn't an ordinary child. Suddenly, he asked how to get to the Huberic place. Paz explained it was easy because his father could teleport them there. This made Squall even more eager to meet Petra in person. Paz then whispered to Kedresic, suggesting that Huberic might have a suspicious motive. As a result, Kedresic was open to listen to Paz. Paz mentioned that the Huberic region had been in conflict with neighbors for years and might be looking for a solution. They wanted to use Kedresic's military power to end the fights by marrying his daughter to Kedresic's grandson. Kedresic felt proud of his military might and openly discussed Swale's meeting with a woman for everyone to hear in Casserole, nodded in agreement. Later, Squill approached Paz, apologizing for his informal behavior. He then asked about Petra's favorite food. Paz admitted he didn't know much since he had only met her once, but Petra liked sweet snacks, especially toast. Squall was thrilled to hear this and thought Paz was skilled at making sweets. Paz then shared his excitement about making sweet snacks and even mentioned making banca pie before. However, Squall was more interested in Petra and asked Paz to create another picture of her with more colors and sparkle. Later, Paz and his father returned to Moore Town, where they found the residents collaborating to repair the damaged buildings. The distribution of wood and resources was going smoothly, 
mostly funded by the Mortum family. She found Casserole's generosity unusual for a ruler, but Casserole believed it would be shameful if he made his people poor. Shortly after, Paz brought two letters from the Huberic and Cadresic regions. After reading them, Casserole confirmed that their region would receive an income of 20,000 silver coins, indicating the engagement between Squale and Petra had been arranged. Paz felt his efforts had paid off, having waited patiently for a response from the Huberic family. Casserole explained that the payment would come in installments of 30 gold coins as an advance, meant for escorting Petra safely to the capital. He had been tasked with protecting her, considering the opposition their marriage would face due to ongoing conflicts of war. Thus, the marriage news was kept secret, although Casserole anticipated it would be revealed during Petra's coronation ceremony at the church. The church remains neutral, not taking sides with any country. But where money is involved, people tend to gossip. And since the church is neutral, it becomes a place where information can be bought and sold. Casserole can easily teleport Petra alone, but he can't bring his guards because hiring them in the capital might lead to spies. Despite the difficulties, Casserole accepts the mission to help Morton progress, hoping it will earn respect from the royal family. This motivates Paz to ensure the mission succeeds, for both Morton's advancement and his Candy Kingdom dream. He suggests hiding Petra in a secure venue, with only one entrance until the engagement ceremony, ensuring her safety. Casserole agrees, seeing it as a safe option and allowing him to teleport during the event. Sheet is excited about the 30 gold coins. Later, Paz submits an expense report, which includes the cost of sugar and a box of banca fruit, upsetting Casserole. Paz remains calm, but Casserole decides not to give him any money for now. The following day, Casserole and Paz go to the Hubaric residence to pick up Petra. Casserole avoids mentioning that Paz is there to escort her, fearing Huberic won't believe it due to Paz's young age. Instead, he says Paz is there for company. Huberic thanks Pa, believing his magic helped Petra find a suitable partner. When the carriage door opened, Casserole admired Princess Petra's beauty respectfully. Petra thanked Paz for the tasty sweets, and he promised to bring more next time. However, when Paz mentioned the dough he had made, a servant coughed, so Paz stopped talking and entered the carriage. At the same time, Licorice appeared distant and didn't greet Paz warmly, prompting Petra to scold her as her older sister. Paz then assured them it was fine. Once everyone was inside, they began their journey. During the trip, they discussed their plan. They would first go to the nearest local church under the pretense of an ordination ceremony. Casserole would then use teleportation magic to take them to the capital church. Petra would hide in the ordination room until the main event while Casserole and the others guarded outside. As they traveled, Paz chatted with Petra and noticed that the criminals were following them. Shortly after, they arrived at a local church, where Hubarak disembarked cautiously, followed by Casserole. Initially, everything seemed safe, but that changed suddenly when the criminals appeared. Casserole and Hubarak confronted them while the coachman fled, and other criminals entered the carriage, causing panic among the women. Thankfully, Paz intervened, and with Casserole's help, they defeated the criminals. Afterward, Petra was guided into the church hall. Lycoris appeared frightened, but Pa, showing bravery, reassured her. Lycoris was impressed by Pa, who despite being younger, seemed more mature. Despite her previous attitude, Lycoris felt like an outsider compared to her sister. However, she didn't expect Pa to show her kindness. Upon reaching the ordination room, Pa suggested they hold hands to establish a connection as Casserole initiated teleportation. In an instant, they arrived in the capital. On the other hand, a man named Armar was planning to harm Princess Petra. Armar, once a Duke nobleman, aimed to show regret to Duke Kadresic by hiring criminals to kidnap Princess Petra. He offered 10 gold coins for the task. One of the criminals, named Strudel, questioned Armar's true intentions because he wasn't sure the reason behind the kidnapping. But he guessed that Armire's goal might be either to destroy the Kadresic family or to save the kidnapped woman to regain his noble status by marrying her. Meanwhile, outside the church, there were many crowds and guards from the capital. Paz noted the capital's remarkable security system, supported by the Hubrek family's military forces. Paz thought it unlikely that a small area like Morton could gather such a large number of people. Seeing Petra in panic, Paz tried to reassure her by mentioning Squail's kindness. This brought to Petra's mind an image of Squail's handsome face from the photo, pleasing Paz as he found the matchmaking photo to be very effective. 
Shortly after, Petra was summoned to start the ordination ceremony. Casserole then requested Paz to escort Lycoris, who appeared exhausted, to take a break. At that moment, she'd advised Paz quietly to be more attentive in such situations. Paz then invited Lycoris to rest together in the living room. Meanwhile, Armar was shown relaxed and awaiting the outcome of the criminal's mission, as the event was about to begin. After the ordination ended, guards from the capital escorted the princess to the main event. Meanwhile, in the living room, Paz felt uneasy because Lycoris's maid, Callop, appeared rude, which created a tense atmosphere. Suddenly, a magical spell appeared, creating a deep hole and dragging Lycoris and Paz into it. Upon hearing the commotion, Casserole hurried to the living, surprised to see a hole there. It was evident that someone was using magic. Caleb then informed Casserole about Lycoris and Paz being pulled into the hole. Casserole immediately told Sheet to keep him updated while he entered the hole to rescue them. Inside the room where they were trapped, Paz realized that Strudel was responsible for the magical abduction. Paz asked Strudel about his intentions, but Strudel refused to reveal anything, seeing no advantage in doing so. Paz felt relieved that Kella hadn't fallen into the hole, as she would inform his father about their situation. Paz suspected that the kidnapping was targeted at Lycoris, rather than himself, a minor nobleman. When Paz considered escaping, Strudel warned him of severe consequences if he tried to flee. At the same time, Casserole continued to track the path of the hole, and he reached its end but couldn't detect Paz's presence. Returned to Paz, when Lycoris grasped their situation, he tried to comfort her, explaining it and urging her not to panic. Oddly, Lycoris felt reassured when Paz spoke. Knowing he needed to be careful, Paz recognized the possibility of other guards outside despite their single captor. Thus, he aimed to gather as much information as possible. Suddenly, Paz started acring, trying to appear sad over losing his 200 gold coins due to the abduction, surprising the kidnapper. Paz elaborated that being from a noble family, he would likely offer a tempting ransom. Because nobles often resolve matters with money, especially given Paz's association with a duke, who would be willing to pay a significant sum. However, the kidnapper hesitated, concerned that Paz might be tricking them. Thanks to his intuitions, Paz now understood that a nobleman was behind the kidnapping, evident from the luxurious place. Despite its neglect, Paz guessed that the mastermind was a former nobleman who had fallen ten years ago. Acting swiftly, Paz recalled nobleman who clashed with Duke Kadresic, remembering the Armeyer family as the likely suspect, fallen a decade ago. Using magic, Paz wrote a message on cloth and teleported to his father's location. Meanwhile, Casserole returned to the living room, unable to find Paz. Kala appeared frustrated, accused the Mortone family of being too calm. Suddenly, Paz's ribbon appeared, indicating his presence at Armeyer's residence. Casserole then immediately sent Sheet to the Duke's residence with teleportation while organizing support to raid Armeyer's home. Back with Paz, Strudel became furious upon realizing his mistake in kidnapping Lycoris instead of Petra. As he approached Lycoris, Paz suddenly appeared in front of him through teleportation, taking a punch. Strudel then confessed his failure, as Petra was already engaged to Squail, meaning he wouldn't receive payment. To cover his tracks, Strudel intended to kill Paz and Lycoris. With a quick maneuver, Paz subdued one of the kidnappers and injured Strudel's arm. Strudel asked how Paz moved so fast, but Paz refused to explain, seeing no advantage in doing so. With courage, Paz demanded Strudel's surrender, bringing an end to the tense situation. Moral lesson from the situation, always double-check your targets, especially if you're in it for the money, because you might end up trying to kidnap the wrong person and missing out on a reward of 200 gold coins or get a punch from a child.